Hello and welcome to another video. I don't know why I'm talking like I used to in my really old YouTube videos. So I thought it was about time to return to the high voltage stuff. You're thinking bloody hell. Bloody hell. It's about effing time. It's about bloody time. It's about bloody time he made another video. Today, I shall be making a Tesla coil driver. And this is the circuit that I'm going to use. It's also going to have an interrupter, which uses one of Steve Ward's circuits that you can see here. I'll talk you through this circuit first. So to do the oscillation, I thought instead of using feedback, I would use a CD4046 chip set up as a high frequency oscillator. So I've chosen a 33 picofarad capacitor between pin 6 and 7, a 22 kilo ohm resistor, and with this potentiometer here, I should get roughly between 300 kilohertz and maybe 1 megahertz tuning range. I might add another variable resistor here just for fine tuning. And I know what you're saying. Why didn't I just go with feedback? Well, thing is with feedback, if you've got too much of it, or you've got too little feedback, it's not going to work. You can also get phasing issues. I think it's just going to be much simpler to go with this. So, our output comes from the CD4046, goes into these two chips, and then into the gate drive transformer, which is a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one transformer. And then, of course, you can see where it connects to the MOSFETs. So to make sure that both MOSFETs don't come on together, I've added a 2 ohm resistor between the gate drive transformer and the MOSFET gate, just to introduce a little bit of delay into the MOSFET gate charging. And then to discharge the MOSFET gates quickly, I'm using a diode. So this will make sure that by the time one MOSFET gate starts charging, the other MOSFET gate will have completely discharged. Between the gate driver chips and the gate drive transformer, there's a 5 ohm rheostat, or at least I hope to find a 5 ohm rheostat. I might have to just go with a variable resistor. I'm sure I've got some in my stockpiles of electronic components and stuff. And what this is going to do is it's going to tune the performance of the transformer so we get the best output at the MOSFET gates. want to make it nice and square. This capacitor really isn't necessary, but just in case one or both of these chips lock up and they're outputting DC, that's going to stop DC getting into the transformer and burning things up, because, you know, you don't want DC getting into a transformer. Nobody wants that. Normally in this configuration, even without the capacitor, this transformer will be seeing AC, so it's uh, not really a problem, but it's just there for safety reasons. And finally, that brings us to the staccato controller, or interrupted, whatever you want to call it. So, when the switch is up, we have 12 volts going into the chip's enable pin, so they'll be on constant, so we've got constant wave. And when it's on staccato, these chips will be getting their enable signal from Steve Ward's circuits. I'm going to make a few changes to this. Firstly, this 470 microfarad capacitor, I'm going to put in something maybe 10 times that, because not only will this voltage regulator have to power this circuit, it's also going to have to power the other circuit you saw. In fact, I might even add another voltage regulator to power just the gate drive chips. Also, I don't have any 2N3906, 2N22s or 2N3904 transistors, so instead I'm going to use BC547 and 557. Should work just as well. And instead of a variable resistor here, I'm just going to use a fixed resistor because I've built the circuit up in the past and, uh, well, this doesn't really seem to do anything, so uh, I'll just put a 10 kilo ohm resistor in there or something like that. This resistor is where the business happens. Also, I might use a red LED here instead of a green one, because all this is doing is just indicating that the circuit's powered up. So it's just going across the supply rails. So it's not going to matter what colour it is. And this is what I'm going to be building in this video. Then in the next video, I'm going to get on with the high frequency stuff. Now you might be wondering why I'm using this circuit. Why didn't I just come up with my own? Well, <clears throat> I've got this circuit on my wall. This circuit synchronises itself to the mains frequency, which is the most important part. And well, got it right here, so I might just as well build it. 
And if you're wondering what these numbers are all about, well, that's just... I just needed to write down what capacitors and resistors I need. And don't worry about this. That's just another circuit that I wanted to try a long time ago. It doesn't matter. So why do I want one that's going to synchronize itself to the mains? Well, imagine this graph is what the mains frequency does. So we start at zero volts and then it goes up to whatever your mains voltage is and then falls back to zero. And then of course it does exactly the same thing but going negative. So if I do half wave rectification to power the MOSFETs from the mains, well the bottom half of that mains voltage is going to be gone. And with a staccato controller that doesn't synchronize itself, it could fire here, which isn't going to give you anything. It's fine if it fires here, or here, or here, or there, but if it crosses there, or anywhere along here, it's not going to do anything. That's why I'm using one that synchronizes itself to the mains. Well, let's get building stuff. Okay, so I've sourced all the parts I'm going to need. Okay, I'm just doing a little mock-up here. Just seeing where everything's going to go. I don't know where the corner of this board went. The weather forecast said we'll have storms tonight. Well, doesn't look like that's going to happen. Nope. Just the same old boring blue skies and boring sun. It's boring. It's boring weather. When well, I say weather, it's more an absence of weather. And although I hate sunny days with every fibre of my being because they do not coordinate with my introverted ways and my quiet, creative inner state, I will say this. When it's sunny and bright out, I don't need the lights on. The sun can light the room instead. And that's about the only good thing they have going for them, though. And now, back to the workshop. Shut up, stupid pigeons. Okay, so the voltage regulator is installed. There's my very messy wiring. Now, I've decided that I'm going to have the staccato controller on this top part of the board and the gate driver circuits on the bottom part of the board. And I'm going to add in a second voltage regulator strictly for the gate driver chips. That way, when the gate driver chips pull current, it's not going to interfere with the rest of the circuits. So the next thing to do is install the diodes right here. Hope they don't go wild, and they rectify the voltage, and put them in here. Well, the power supply section is done, or at least for the staccato controller. And I know you're going to want to have a look at the back side, so there you go. So we've got the two diodes, we've got the diode that goes in the middle of the switch so I can select the polarity. Now I've just got to put the triple five timers on, and the transistors, and the resistors, and the capacitors, and we'll see if this works. Alright, so now I've installed a positive rail, and a negative rail, for the interrupter circuit, or staccato circuit, whatever you want to call it. Now, normally I wouldn't do it this way, but um, if you go over to the schematic, there is so much connected to the positive and negative rails, it's just going to be easier to do it like that, and I don't really think it's going to matter since we're going to be using triple five timers at mains frequency, so uh, yeah, I think we'll be alright. Tell you one good thing about using supply rails like this, makes it really easy to connect up my faulty meter, so I can test that the voltage regulator is actually doing its thing, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm a bit paranoid right now. Somewhere out there there's a lot of clanking and stuff going on, probably one of the neighbours over there. I don't know if you heard that. I'm paranoid that any moment now is going to get some big noisy machine out, some like petrol powered saw or something like that and start it up for no reason. So let me just explain what we've got here. So I've got my power supply set to about 16 volts and that's going to supply that 16 volts to the circuit through this light bulb here for a little bit of current limiting and yes I know that's a mains voltage bulb but It'll still do the job. It's just not going to light up if anything shorts out. And then we've got the circuit itself and the faulty meter set to voltage. So if we get 12 volts on the faulty meter, let's see. So turn the circuit on. I've got it connected to one of the diodes, and we get nothing. 
Well, it's a good thing there are diodes there, because me being the master of all stupidity, I connected it up the wrong way round. So positive was going into where negative should be, and negative was going into where positive should be. So instead of positive here, I had positive there instead. So good thing the diodes cut caught that. Anyway, we've got 16 volts going in. Now let's check what we've got coming out of the regulator. We should have 12 volts. And if I could just get that on there. And indeed we do. Now here we are on the other diode. And that seems to be working well too. And through the magic of video editing, it is done. I've still got to put the triple five times in and find a suitable transformer to run this off since it syncs to the mains frequency. Don't know how well it's going to work with the transistors I chose. Hopefully it will work fine. So let's see what it does. Let's hope it doesn't release the magic smoke. Okay, so I've cracked open an old charger that I have laying around. and I've no idea what it was for, but um, it's got a center tap transformer. This isn't the transformer I'm actually going to use in the final thing, but it'll be good enough for testing purposes. So, from the center point to either end of the output coil, got about 17 volts, which when rectified is going to be about 24 volts, which is a little higher than I want, but uh, like I said, this is just for testing purposes. Okay, so here I am, about to test this thing. No idea if it's going to work. Got the transformer all out of that circuit board and hooked up and ready to go. Got a light bulb in series with it, just in case anything goes wrong. So we're going to power this up and see if any of the lights come on. I don't expect it to work first time, but, you know, maybe we'll get lucky. Oh, would you look at that? It's working. Now, I know this may seem like a lot to go through just to flash an LED, but, you know, it's going to do more than that. So there's the staccato circuits. So I decided to just get rid of that variable resistor and just stick a fixed resistor in there. I'm using a 2.2K. So now the only control it has is this. I can adjust the blink rate of the LED. The camera's not catching all the blinks, but I've got the scope hooked up so uh, we can see the waveform that this thing is going to put out. Because I think you can honestly agree. That's going to be a lot more interesting than just watching a flashing light. Looks like it's pulsating. To me, it looks like that light is constantly on, but on the camera it looks like it's pulsating. And this is the waveform we have on the skirt. This is what's coming out of our staccato circuit. Okay, I'm going to start decreasing the potentiometer. Let's see, if, let's see how low we can go. Okay, so that's as low as we can go. Camera's actually picking up every flash of the LED. Now, some of you might be asking, why don't I just plug this straight into my power supply and test it that way? Why do I go through all the trouble of getting a transformer and uh, making a little power supply bit there and everything? Well, this needs an AC power source because it synchronizes itself to the mains frequency. So I'm going to take the switch here, I'm going to put it in its middle position so the mains frequency does not get into the circuit. It's very difficult. So it's basically disconnecting that middle diode. And now it's on continuously. The switch back so the diode's back in the circuit. And we get a blinking light. Thought it'd be rude not to look at some waveforms. So um, this is what's going into pin 2 of the first triple five right there. Let's probe pin 3 and see what that gives us. Okay, we've got a nice pulse wave there. Let's look at pin 4 on the first triple 5. And there we are again. Actually, let's probe what's coming out of the transistors. Um, this resistor here should be able to get... Should be able to have a look at that. If I can just get that in there. Okay, there we go. So this is what coming out of the transistors. Nice good square wave. So that's our mains being rectified. 
That's our mains being turned into a square wave. And that's what it gets turned into when it enters the first... And that's what the capacitor and the resistors turn it into when it goes into pin 2 of the first triple 5. So, let's see what's going on between pins 6 and 7. And there we go. Now let's have a look at our other triple 5 timer. Let's probe pin 2, see what we got. There's barely anything there. I think that's enough for it to do stuff. Here's pin 3, our output pin. This rectangular wave there. Quite a high duty cycle. And let's probe pins 6 and 7. Let's see what they're doing. Get a ramp, ramp waveform. And I'm just going to adjust this. Another look. Well, that's all the low frequency stuff done. Now let's do the high frequency stuff.